ever had a sin in your life? Have you ever had something really disastrous? You wish it never happened. And we finally knew that you had to ask forgiveness. <coughs> what if there was no mercy? What if you could not ask for forgiveness? You know, I think today that our grace that we have in Christ and our mercy we have in Christ, I think these things have been taken so for granted that we don't even comprehend the mercy and the grace of God. Because if it wasn't for his mercy or his grace, some of us probably wouldn't be here. Yeah. And if we were here, we probably wouldn't be joyful and happy in serving God. So I want to talk this morning, if you'd just like to turn over here to Psalm 67. And there's a single thought here about mercy. And mercy is set to worship here in Psalm 67. You know the psalms are usually songs. And the psalmist decided to sing about the mercy of God. And I believe that mercy is the favor of God. If you've ever served God at all, if you've ever been in the church world at all, you've heard that mercy means the favor of God, that unmerited favor of God. And if I said to you, what is mercy? You'd say, oh, it's the unmerited favor of God. Do we understand the unmerited favor of God? You know what that means? That means that we were guilty and he mercied us and we didn't become punished for it. Even though we were guilty, he put his mercy upon us. It's awesome when we look into the depths of the word of mercy, we find its companion is blessing. Because blessing is the favor of God also. And then I want to talk about the third word today is meditation. We need to meditate upon the mercy of God in our life. We need to go back and think, here's where God mercied me. He mercied me over and over. If you really will truly do this, and you go back in your life, you'll find out that he has been a merciful God. Yeah. At least in my life, he has been a merciful God. And he has blessed me beyond measure. I don't deserve the blessings that God has given to me. And how often do we just give time to that? When do we just rise up in the morning and say, Oh God, you've been so merciful to me. I made it through the night and I'm yeah. still breathing. Yeah. You know, it's the breath of God that is in us, and the mercy of God, and the grace of God. And I believe that in the days ahead, as we see our world spiraling downward and coming against the things of God and the holiness of who God is, I believe that those days there's going to have to be a company of God's people who will rise up and understand grace and understand mercy because we're going to have to give mercy to those things that we see that are wrong. We're going to have to give mercy to people that do things that we think they shouldn't do instead of hate them and forge a campaign against them. We have to love them and pray for them and bring them into the goodness and the power and the grace of God. And I believe that as we see the things happening, you know, this is going to be a disastrous presidential warfare. Yes. Yes. And we need to see the mercy and the grace of God. And we need to humble ourselves like we've never humbled ourselves and seek God for our nation. I don't care about who gets in office. I'm saying I care about our nation. Amen. I care about what's going to happen to our nation. And I care about what's going to happen to the church. And they care about what's going to happen to the believers because already there is things come against the religious sector of people. And we're not just religious, we're Christians. Amen. We're followers of Christ. But there is already, if you read the bulletin today, there's already <laughs> things in our world that has come against the Christians and their beliefs. You know, when they walk in here and say to me as a pastor, you cannot preach on this or this or this anymore, we know that we're going to have to sacrifice our lives for the cause of the kingdom. 
you ever read the book of uh, the Fox's Book of Martyrs, you know, there's going to have to be sacrifice today in the house of God. So God is merciful, and I want to look at his mercy. God grants mercy and blessings every day to us that we don't even recognize, that we don't even think about. And Psalm 67 starts out, and it says, God be merciful unto us. Saints, if you don't know how to pray, read the Psalms. They will teach you. Right there is the prayer of the psalmist. He says, God, be merciful to us. Bless us. Cause your face to shine upon us. And Selah. Now let's talk about Selah. There are varied explanations of Selah. And if I ask you, you say, well, it means pause. Or it means think about it. But... It's a musical term, and I won't pronounce it right, but I'll try. It's a musical uh, term which is called a da capital. Any of you musicians recognize that word? Probably because I murdered it. But nonetheless, it's a musical term, and it directs, it calls for repetition. Oh God, be merciful unto us. Oh God, be merciful unto us calls for repetition and it calls for the subject to be meditated upon. And I, I, we have sila sometimes in our congregational reading and, and our readers go sila and go on. And I keep thinking, why don't they stop there? Because yeah. we need to stop and see what it is say to stop and look at. And church, we have got to become more conscious truly more conscious when we read the Word of God. We have got to have a focus on what God is saying to us. And this word sila in the, in the music terminology, it means that we need to meditate upon that subject. Well, what was the subject? The mercy of God. So when we read that, we need to stop and say, well, what, what about this mercy? What about this blessing? And does God really cause his face to shine upon me? What is our meditation about today, church? Do we daydream? Do we think about winning the lottery and what we would do? Nobody does that. <laughs> you know, what? what is our thought process? What do we think about? You know, do we think about going shopping? Do we, what do we think about? What is our meditation? We need to have some meditate, some spiritual meditation. Meditation about the grace. Where did, where, where did God mercy me? Did I really realize it and give him thanks? Did I really comprehend that it was the mercy of God that brought me through that trial or that temptation? That it was God's hand upon me? That his face was shining upon me? Psalm 67 is our message today. If you have your Bibles open, let's just read it together. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. See ya. Wait, wait. Meditate. Think. That thy way may be known upon the earth thy saving help among all nations. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon the earth. Well, what's he saying now? That God would govern the nations upon the earth. That God would govern Iraq. Yes. That God would govern the nations of the world. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall hear him. You know, just take this psalm home this week and just read it every day and break it apart and see what it is that God's saying. He says, let the people praise thee, O God. Then he wants to say, let all. 
Do you understand what would happen if every one of us would praise God with the depth of our spirit in one moment and raise one great voice of anthem of praise? God would hear our prayer in a supernatural way. Amen. But you know, we're people and our minds stray and we, we can't, we have a hard time just focusing. It's the day in which we live, church. That there are so many voices in the earth. <laughs> multiplex of voices in the earth. And we cannot, we cannot meditate. If we try to meditate, if we try to pray, the phone will ring. Or while we're even praying to God, the most high God, there'll come a thought into our mind that yes. shouldn't be there. Amen. Am I lying? No. no. So the hour is upon us to bring our hearts and our minds into the subjection and have at least every day a spiritual moment of meditation where we thank God for his goodness and his mercy because it says here that all the nations are going to praise him. When you hear about the news and all this, you don't really realize that all the nations are going to praise him because some of the nations are killing those who praise him. But God is still in control because his mercy, what? Endures forever. When we truly have a knowledge of his mercy, we will be a humble people. We are not a humble people. God is looking for a humble people, a people who will bow in his presence, a people who will weep before him, a people who will forego the things of this world and give thoughts of meditation to him. Now, mercy is more than just the favor of God. Mercy is compassion, and write this down if you got a pen. Mercy is compassion that forbears punishment even when justice demands it. See, mercy is compassion that forbears punishment. How many know there might have been something in your life that you deserve punishment? But even when justice, demand, justice demands it, the mercy of God overrides our guilt. God is a compassionate, merciful, full of grace, favor God of forgiveness. God is merciful unto us with mercy comes blessing. Blessing also means the favor of God. This is the meaning of blessing. Um, this is revelatory. You know, people say, well, God bless you. How many are going to somebody say that? Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Okay, goodbye. God bless you. Blessing is so powerful. Blessing is so powerful. Blessing means to be consecrated by blood. Learn something here, church. I learned something here. Old Testament blessing was under the law. If you wanted the blessing, you had to do exactly what God said. It was an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Do what I say or die. That's the blessing of the Old Testament. But now we're under the blessing of the New Testament. The blessing of the New Testament has been consecrated by blood. That means it's been set apart. It means when we bless somebody, we're wanting them to be consecrated and set apart for eternal life in heaven because of Jesus' sacrifice. I mean, Christianity is so... I don't know the words. We are. We're... We're shallow. We don't comprehend the depth of our salvation. There was blood shed that you could be forgiven. Blood was shed that you could be forgiven. Old Testament, once a year, they could go get forgiveness. I mean, you know what I'm talking about? So once a year. And then the next day, if they sinned, they were in trouble for a whole year. I may know that all of us would be in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. 
But the blessing, the real blessing of the New Testament, the blessing of grace and the blessing of mercy means that when we say God bless you, we're saying there was blood spent that you might have this blessing, that you might be consecrated, and in this blessing comes eternal life. The church needs to get, get into the depth of God and forget the entertainment and forget all of the light things and the fuzzies and all the good things and they need to hear about hell, fire and damnation and the forgiveness of sin and the shed blood of Jesus until we become a consecrated set apart people that we might have to stand before a firing squad and we will not go against our God. Amen. God is merciful to us. Psalm 104, 33 says, I will sing of the Lord as long as I live. Sometimes, church, I can hardly get you to sing. Oh. You know, sing. And most usually it's because the enemy defeats you and you think that you can't sing, so you just kind of sit there. You know, when... God says we should sing unto the Lord. He says, I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise while I have my being. <laughs> Thank God you have your being. You understand there's people that don't? Thank God we have our being. Thank God we have our thought process. Thank God we got to the house of God today. Hallelujah. You know, he says, and verse 34 Look at this. It says, My meditation of him shall be sweet, and I will be glad in the Lord. Yes. Do we have sweet meditation? Now, church, listen to me honest and be honest with yourself. Because when we get mad, we don't have sweet meditation. And often, we don't even have to be mad. We just have to remember something that was ugly that happened. And then we have a meditation, but it's not sweet. Does the church know what I'm talking yes. about? Even, you know, you run into somebody that you forgave years ago and you meet them and you're nice and you do the, the Christian thing and everything, but you walk away and you have a meditation that isn't sweet. Now, God wants to take over our hearts and our minds and our thoughts that we can become like Him. It says, my meditation of Him shall be sweet and I will be glad in the Lord so we can walk away with that painful thing and say oh God thank you for your mercy thank you for your grace oh thank you and begin to thank God for what he brought you through and how he brought change into your life since we live in a fast paced society we're prone to not take time to meditate upon the things of God we're, we, we don't take time to sing and to praise I mean Sometimes it's the when will this singing get over? You know, let's get on with something. It's getting late. I don't see anybody do that, but you know what I'm talking about. We can go anywhere. We can be in a doctor's office and we can be sitting in the waiting room and we're just anxious. Why? Why? I was supposed to be here at nine. It's five after nine, you know. Does anybody else have those? No. <laughs> I hope I'm not in this alone today. Because... It's the works of the enemy to make us anxious. Yes. We can say, oh, thank you, God. They haven't called me yet. Let me see. I love you. I worship you. I thank you this week that you did this for me. I thank you. Pastor's sermon was so great. <laughs> you know, you start to meditate on good things and say, let's see. Now, what, can, what, can, what did she talk about? You know, let me try to remember that. Somebody asks you, you go home and you go to dinner and somebody says, what was the pastor's message? You know, uh, oh, well, it's been about mercy. You know, it's about Psalm 67, church. And it's about be merciful unto us, O God. You know, our thought part patterns have got to be brought into subjection. Psalm 119, 48, the psalm of the word of God. It says, My hands will I lift unto thy commandments, which I have loved. Do you love the commandments of the Lord? It says, I will meditate 
on my statutes, and that, that means that you're on your instructions, oh God. I'll meditate on your instruction. It says, remember the word unto thy servant, which has caused you to hope. This is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word hath pricked me. When's the last time that we meditated on the Ten Commandments? Because if we did, it probably changed us. Change our speech, change our relationships, change our attitude, because we're supposed to love, you know. Just, just go over the Ten Commandments. Can we even quote them? And have we meditated upon them? The psalmist says, you know, I, I lift up my hands to your commandments and I meditate upon them. Well, there are more commandments in the Ten, church. <coughs> just the things that we read today. Sing unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give glory to the Lord. Those are all things that in the Word of God teaches us to bring joy and gladness and help in the time of affliction. 267 times mercy is mentioned in the Bible. Now, if you really want to be blessed, get on your computer if you do that. And go to mercy and just read every scripture, 267 of them, that God promises mercy in the situations of our life. And there are times when he places no mercy. That's not counting the word mercies, and that's not counting the word merciful. That's just mercy. Oh, God, mercy us. The first of the 86 times the phrase is heard in the Old Testament is 1 Chronicles 16.34. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Now remember, this is in the season of the law, church. It was an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. It was obey the law for God. And they said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good, for his mercy is good forever. Sometimes I think the body of Christ truly believes his mercy endures forever because we often <coughs> fake righteousness believing that God is merciful. You can hear me say amen. I think we believe in mercy because often we act like if I do this, well, God is merciful. But mercy, his mercy is pure. His mercy, mercy is righteous. No matter how we are, his mercy still prevails. The message today is about mercy. If he mercies us, he blesses us. And if he gives us mercy and blessing, we should meditate upon these blessings and these times of, of his grace and his mercy to us. Psalm 67 is motivated, the psalm that we read this morning, is motivated by meditation. Twice it says Selah. Twice it means stop and think about this. Twice it means pause and read the subject again that there might be greater understanding. It's important, church, so important to know that there is stormy weather ahead. I want to tell you that in the storm, Jesus stood up and said, what? Be still. So we have to know him in order to call upon him and to comprehend his mercy and grace in the storms of our life. This is our hope, church. Can, can you ever imagine, uh, you weary with things, don't you? I do. We get weary. How about God looking at all of us? In our weariness, in our lack of trust, and in our lack of grace, and in our lack of mercy, grace with one another, you know, does he weary? 
Well, if he was flesh, he'd truly worry, weary. But he is God. And he doesn't weary. He still extends his grace, his mercy, his peace to his people. This is a unique scripture from Lamentations 3, 21. It talks about his eternal mercy. You know, somebody can mercy you today, and next week you think, okay, well, I can get by with that because they were kind to me, but next week you don't get by with it. You know what I'm talking about? They might be kind to you one time, and the next time they're not kind to you. But God's mercy is eternal. It doesn't go up and down. It doesn't go sometime. It's eternal. And this scripture says, and the writer of Lamentations says, I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Everybody knows this scripture. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore I will hope in him. But we always know that his compassions fail not. We always know that he's faithful every morning. But do we understand that his mercies, if without his mercies we wouldn't have that morning. Without his mercies, we would be consumed. Our world has transgressed against God. And yet, he's a merciful God. Paul exhorts Timothy, in 1 Timothy 4, he says, Be an example of the believer. This is what we've been saying for several years now in our messages and in Sunday school teachings. It talks about this. Be thou an example of the believer. Why? Because there's coming a time when the world needs to know who is the believer because I need help. Be an example of the believer in word, in conversation, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. I mean, that's a big order, church. It doesn't mean just say a smile at them and say, God bless you. No, no, no. It means they're going to look at your character. They're going to look at your conversation. They're going to look at your spirit, your attitudes. Is the church here the word of the Lord? And verse 15 says, meditate upon these things. You know, give yourself wholly to them that you might profit and that your property might appear to all. Well, talking about mercy, talking about blessing, talking about meditating. Psalm 103, 2. This is a great meditation church. I say, type it up, put it on your mirror, set it before you. It's a meditation. It says, bless the Lord. O oh, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Some of you saints can quote that. But sometimes we just quote it because we know it. We don't quote it because we understand it. We don't quote it because there's a, a, a deep meaning in it. Bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, forget not all his benefits. He forgives all our iniquities. He heals our diseases. He redeems our life from destruction and he crowns us with loving kindness and tender what? He satisfies, satisfies our mouth with good things and he renews our youth like the eagles. Oh Jesus, I want that. He renews our youth like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. So this morning, the message, meditate upon God's blessings in your life. Meditate upon the sacrifice of Christ. We're going to receive communion in just a moment. Meditate upon the Lord's mercy, his forgiveness. Perhaps you have been saved from some punishment in your life because of the favor 
gone. You're asked, what did the pastor preach on today? I preached on meditate on God's blessings and his mercy. Now, in case you forget, I want you to turn in your Bibles to Psalm 136. This psalm holds 25 verses of mercy. And I want us to have just a little project that won't take long. Psalm 136. I really, really, really want mercy to get deep in your spirit. Give mercy to one another. Give grace to one another. Be by Jesus. I'm going to say something, and then I want you to say the last part of the verse. Does everybody know what the last part is? Verse, 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 verse. Psalm 1, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For his mercy and forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods. For his mercy and forever. Give thanks for the Lord of lords. For his mercy and forever. Who alone does great wonders? For his mercy and forever. Wisdom comes from heaven. For his mercy and forever. He stretched out the earth above the waters. He made great lights. For his mercy forever. The sun to rule by day. For his mercy forever. The moon and the stars to rule by night. For his mercy forever. With a strong hand and an outstretched arm. For his mercy forever. He divided the Red Sea. For his mercy forever. Israel passed through it. For his mercy endureth forever. He overthrew the enemy. For his mercy endureth forever. He led the people through the wilderness. For his mercy endureth forever. He remembered us in our low estate. For his mercy endureth forever. He hath redeemed us from our enemies. For his mercy endureth forever. He giveth food to all flesh. For his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven. For his mercy endureth forever. Brother Danny read this morning and he said, Are we going to run out of his mercy? It endureth forever. It endureth forever, church. Amen. And there's some reason why the Lord felt he needed to say it 26 times in this chapter so that we won't forget. It's all right for him to be merciful to us, but he requires us to be merciful to others. Today we're going to have communion. And if you would come and prepare it, I have a couple things I want to say about the holiness of communion. You know that Jesus said when he held up the cup, he says, this is the cup of the New Testament. Does everybody know that? He says, this is the cup of the New Testament and my body and my blood. This today, I want you to see it as a cup of mercy because of the mercy of God who sent his son. And because of the mercy of his son, he died for us. And if it was an Old Testament cup, we'd all be in serious trouble. Do you understand that, church? Yes. But this is the New Testament cup. It is a cup of mercy. It is a cup of grace. You know, you, you can outrun the law, but you can never outrun God. No matter what has ever transpired in your life, you cannot outrun the grace of God. It's about forgiveness. It talks about the cup of blessing. And 
I was so moved as I studied this and saw what blessing, biblical blessing means. And I hope you never look at it the same again when you say to somebody, God bless you. Not saying don't say God bless you. I'm saying say it with a little more heart and compassion. Because blessing, this is the cup of blessing. This is the cup of the Lord's body. You know that. But we need to have more meditation about it. And it means, this cup of blessing means that someone was willing to consecrate our life by his blood. You know, if you've ever read the book of Martyrs, they were willing to stand up for Jesus by the shedding of their blood. How much more can we look at Christ who was willing to grace us and to mercy us and give us a cup of blessing that we could identify with his mercy and his grace. This was his body that was broken for us and everyone knows that by his stripes we are healed. The question arises, if by his stripes we, are, we were healed, why am I sick? Listen to the church. Healing is eternal. Yes. He walked along earth and he healed bodies and he's still doing that today. But the greatest healing of all is from the cup and the broken cross. He wishes above all things that we would prosper and be in health as our soul prospers. So if you found grace in the eyes of the Lord today and he brought you into the kingdom and saved your soul and mercyed you in all of your sins and set you free, this is not just a cup of grape juice. This is the inward of the cup of of the New Testament in the body of Christ. And today, we look at it as we receive it as mercy. Because of his mercy, his broken body, his shed blood, blessing one another becomes much more important. Because when we bless, we know that blood was shed for our salvation. Jenny, I want you to take the bread and and bless it. Would you do that this morning? Just break it and bless it. Gracious Father, we thank you for this time that we have today. We know that you made the ultimate sacrifice when your body was broken. And it symbolized as we take of this, we are taking part your salvation with you being victim and being a part of your body. We bless this heaven in your precious name.
that has brought us into a walk of eternal life. For this we give you thanks. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray.